Welcome in to the show. It is Tuesday morning, and I hope you are ready for a wonderful day. I appreciate you joining me today. In the background, I have the uh, Japan-Chile Copa America game that uh, I'm watching uh, a replay of because I was out tonight. But Chile up 2-0. I've always had a nice fondness for Chile um, because their flag is so similar to Texas. So um, it just cuts off instead of the, the blue part going all the way down. The red part goes all the way across and the blue stops halfway. So I've always uh, I've ha always had an affinity for Chile um, after I discovered their flag. And so it's, it's fun to see. And when I do like the Japan side too, though, there's a side that, that really did well against uh, Belgium in the World Cup. Really could have won that game. I thought should have won that game. Uh, got a little... Got a little uptight and, and 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 just got broken down defensively a few few too many times. I don't have a lot to talk about today. I'm pretty much just going to talk soccer. Uh, I mean, there's just not a lot going on right now. I will at the beginning of July. I will start with my fantasy football rankings and and things like that. So definitely stick around for that. Um, going to do all sorts of fun stuff with with fantasy football prep. And you will not want to miss it because I am a three-time league champ in, in my league. And, um, you know, that's that's just the most of, of any owner. So you'll definitely want to hear my, my brilliant advice this time around. The beauty of our league, though, is we trade draft picks. We do all sorts of crazy stuff. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's the best league uh, that I've ever been a part of and that I've ever seen, quite frankly. All right, first of all, Copa America is going about as expected, although yesterday I expected Uruguay to beat Ecuador, but they pounded them 3-0. Um, Ecuador never looked in the game. That was just an absolute beatdown. Uruguay looked really good. They're, they're aging a little bit. You know, Luis Suarez is getting old. Cavani is getting a little bit old. You wonder how much longer this side can kind of stay intact um, as we head towards the next World Cup, will Suarez and, S and Cavani be, uh, you know, the threat, the, the dual striker threat that they've been at the next World Cup? I, I don't see it. I don't see how, you know, their aging bodies are going to be able to, to hold up for that long at the level they currently are. So I think you're going to see a bit of a changing of the guard in Uruguay. They have a great under-19s team. They lost at the... At the under twenty uh, world, at the under nineteen World Cup, but it's still a very good team. They always have a, a lot of talent, but you do wonder how this year, because I mean, those two guys, Cavani and Suarez, have just been the absolute mainstays, um, along with uh, Maxi Pereira and uh, and uh, Diego Godin at the back. The, those those two guys up front have been the mainstays for Uruguay for the past uh, two. Gosh, maybe even three World Cups? For sure, too. So the last two World Cups, I mean, those are the guys that have carried them. Uh, Diego Forlan was the one before that. That's right. I think I think Luis Suarez was there, but uh, Forlan was the guy that, that really, really did the job for him. So I think you'll see that from Uruguay. Um, as far as the rest of the tournament has gone, Brazil didn't look great. Uh in the first half. The second half, they definitely picked it up a little bit, but they were playing Bolivia, so we couldn't really tell much. So uh, I, I imagine we'll get to see more in their next game, which I believe is Peru. Don't quote me on that, but um, I'm fairly certain. I'm fairly certain. I think it's Peru or Venezuela, and I think it's Peru. Um, so, so we'll see how they are without Neymar uh, going forward, I think. I think, again, the, the competition in Copa America, there are a few good teams, but I think Brazil, even without Neymar, is is probably the best of them, and, and if not the best, near the top for sure. Colombia, the big surprise over Argentina. Argentina is fielding a good side for this thing. Messi, Aguero, uh, all the guys you would expect to be in there. Di Maria for, for Argentina, but Colombia really, they, they kind of absorbed the pressure early. And um, 
were really able to uh, to to take advantage late of their chances. Um, Argentina came out as you would expect they would do, kind of with the possession, uh, you know, with Messi and, and Di Maria and Aguero and those guys. That they're going to possess the ball most of the game, but. Colombia was able to take their chance as well and ended up with a huge 2-0 win over Argentina. I still expect Argentina to get through, but it certainly made it. Um, did Chile just score again? I don't know. Their fans, their fans are just going wild. Um, so yeah, Argentina didn't look great, but there's still time. But you just wonder because they didn't look good at the last World Cup. They haven't looked good in a long time. And... And you just wonder kind of when they're going to infuse that squad with a little new life. And and I'm not saying kick Messi out of the team or anything. Uh, but I am saying that that perhaps they just need a little bit of a spark plug in there to kind of change this thing up. And finally, last thing is we have the U.S. playing their first uh, Gold Cup game tonight. Mexico destroyed Cuba. I think it was 7-0 in the end. Um, Costa Rica, easy win. Jamaica, easy win over uh, Honduras. And El Salvador uh, beat Curacao. And uh, Canada destroyed uh, Martinique, I believe. So uh, everybody you would expect to win has won. And then uh, the U.S. will play Guyana. And Trinidad will play Panama tomorrow. So those are the last two like decent teams in CONCACAF or Trinidad and and Panama, and then obviously you have the U.S. taking on Guyana. My expectations for this Gold Cup are low. I mean, new coach, first tournament, still kind of figuring out the guys he wants to play his system well. We have some injuries. Obviously, Tyler Adams is out. He left Josh, Josh Sargent out of the side. Um, so... You know, my expectations are low, and, and I think that's that's where they should be. I would love to say that I'm confident we're going to, you know, get to the final or, or even win this thing, but but I'm not, I think we could lose to, to almost anybody. I don't think we'll lose to Guyana. I hope not. Uh, but, I mean, I could absolutely see us losing to both Panama and Trinidad the way we're playing. So it, it's a scary time right now. My expectations are very low. All I want to see is steady improvement from what we saw in the friendlies because we didn't field full a 18 sides in those friendlies but i need to see some improvement now from those those were atrocious i need to see us control the game against guiana get good chances put some away four nil four nil would be a good win against guiana in my mind if we're able to control the game and get get a good number of chances and then as we move forward, if we don't win the group, I'll be disappointed. That's my expectation, is to win the group. And then from there, you just never know what happens in a one-game playoff. But we need to win this group with Trinidad, Panama, and Guyana. I mean, there's just no excuse. Panama, yes, they made the last World Cup, but they are not a good team. <laughs> Trinidad, obviously, the, uh, the site of our greatest failure as a nation, probably ever <laughs> But uh, certainly, as a as a national soccer team, that was our greatest failure for sure, and uh, we will need to avenge that loss. Uh, in my opinion, for this to be a successful tournament, tournament, so beat Trinidad, win the group, and uh, and then we'll see how it goes in the knockout rounds. Those are always tough. We lost to Jamaica in the last um, real Gold Cup, which was uh, in 2015. We lost to Jamaica in the semifinals, who then lost, obviously, to Mexico in the final. Um, you know, I, I don't have a lot of, of expectation. Again, I, I, I'm excited to see Weston McKinney and Christian Pulisic play together in, this, in the side. I'm excited to see Zach Steffen kind of hopefully take a, a stranglehold on the goalkeeper spot uh, going forward. And... Um, and, and yeah, just kind of see what Burhalter's trying to do with these guys, what system he has in mind. If it feels like we have the players for that to work, if it doesn't, if maybe he needs to switch it up. And uh, we'll see. You know, I will report back uh, tomorrow, and, and we will see about that. As for this Tuesday morning, that's all I've got. 
I hope that you have a wonderful Tuesday. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when we are live every morning at 6 a.m. You should make, make us a part of your morning routine. We greatly appreciate it. Um, I hope you have enjoyed today, and I will see y'all tomorrow.